So we still don't have a confirmed developer for Rugby League Live 5, but since True Blue do own the IP, let's assume that it will be made on the same engine as Rugby League Live 4. As someone that's put in a lot of hours into this game, I think that an extension of Rugby League Live 4 would be the best case scenario, as opposed to creating something from the ground up. For one, Big Ant did leave behind a solid foundation in League Live 4 in my opinion, for the next developer to build from. If you look at the evolution of the League Live series, they did get progressively better. The jump from League Live 1 to League Live 2 was kinda nuts. Uh, League Live 1, we don't, we don't speak about League Live 1 to be honest. What I will say about 1 was, I have plenty of fun memories playing local multiplayer, but League Live 2 for many is still the, the favourite of the franchise. League Live 3 was interesting, it felt like a stripped back version of Rugby League Live 2. It definitely had a more of a arcadey pick up and play friendly kind of feel to it, which is fun don't get me wrong, but it's fun for a moment. The game became incredibly easy once you got used to the AI tendencies especially on the hardest difficulties. You couple that together with no depth in gameplay, and attack especially the game gets super stale. Much like League Live 1 the game is more fun to play against other people. And then you get to League Live 4 which again I think is easily the best of the franchise. They went away from the arcadey feel which I enjoyed a lot, I mean I still do, were easily over thousands of hours played. I think on Steam alone it's like 700 plus. But anyway in League Live 4, although it was another change in direction, I quite liked the way they were going. I think for many it just wasn't pick up and play friendly, I mean when the game first came out I think that was the that was one of the biggest complaints amongst the bugs and glitches was the, the degree of difficulty and the game just being too hard for a lot of people but that was one of the main reasons why I do enjoy it till this day. I believe it aged nicely. Sure the game isn't perfect but with tweaks to gameplay and improvements to features already available, the next developers in charge of an opportunity to deliver maybe the best rugby league game to date. Whether it be an extension of Rugby League Live 4, or even a hybrid of 3 and 4, or something completely new. Today we'll be going through a few things I'd like to see for this new game. So for this new game to have longevity, it needs a few things. The most obvious, it needs to play well. And second, it needs a revamped single player experience. Things that fall under that obviously are career modes, beer pro modes, difficulty, and the AI. And although it's not my cup of tea, I do believe the game could benefit from an ultimate team type mode or some sort of online league or an online ranked mode with some sort of progression system. It would be pointless to have the latter if the game didn't play well. So without further ado, let's get to the wish list and improvements I'd like to see. So for gameplay, we'll begin with the fundamentals and for this video we'll be talking about attack in particular, starting with passing. So there's two types, basic and advanced. The basic passes need the most work, we've all had moments when we want to pass to the nearest player but it instead throws a long ball that usually results in an interception or if they do pass to the nearest player, the pass being thrown floats in the air and kills your momentum. So I'd like to see more refined, more accurate basic passing. I mean it was good in Rugby League Live 2 and Rugby League Live 3 but for some reason it took a backward step in Rugby League Live 4. As for the advanced passing system, I think Rugby League Live 4 nailed it, so they have a first, second, third, and even fourth receiver option, with pass variations for deep passes or flat passes. Deep passes being the safe option and flat passes that get players running onto the ball but they did come with a risk of an interception or a forward pass. They've also nailed how the dummy pass would work, especially when playing against another person as all you need to do is just hold down the pass button and tap the opposite to throw the dummy. This advanced passing system has been a part of the League Life franchise I think since Rugby League Live 1 and it's just gotten better with each iteration I believe the first receiver option was first introduced in Rugby League Live 4 so yeah something similar would be dope to see. Next up kicking. When it comes to kicking the regular general play kicking doesn't need much work as I do think they function quite well. Now I'm talking about your punt kick, your bomb and your field goals. An idea to add depth to these regular kicks would be variations and you could call them advanced kicks. For example, a tornado or floater bomb that would be more difficult to catch than a normal bomb. Now to balance it, you could make the time to execute a tornado or floater longer than a regular bomb. That way people wouldn't always spam the tornado or floater. Or kicks obviously being affected by the weather. Continuing with general play kicking, what really needs the most work is the on the fly kicking which is your grubber kicks and your chip kicks. Now what they need is more distance, grubbers in particular, and for the higher skilled kickers, preferably the playmakers, they should have the ability to kick at unorthodox angles, so like uh, banana chip kicks or banana type grubber kicks. Another improvement they could make to these kicks, or that they should make, is that they need to be harder to regather. In Rugby League Live 4, it's far too easy to grubber and chip for yourself. Speaking of chip kicks, 
I reckon there should be a contest between the nearest defender and the attacker for position, even if it's a simple catching gauge like they have with the uh, bomb kicks, or they could take a page out of Rugby 22's book and do something similar to that if you haven't played it. There'll be examples in the vid. So pretty much contests for chip kicks and uh, maybe a reworked contest mechanic for the bombs. And lastly with the kicks, we got place kicking. When it comes to place kicking, I don't think much work needs to be done. If a new game is being made, adapting Rugby League Life Force place kicking mechanic or system would be good as I do think it works quite well. Honestly, the only improvements I'd like to see uh, to goal kicking from Rugby League Life 4 is mostly aesthetic. It's actually all aesthetic. So pretty much various different place kicking animations or maybe signature place kicking animations from the players themselves. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up Fundamentals Part 1. There will be a Fundamentals Part 2. We'll dive into defense, we'll dive into the play the ball and the AI and that'll pretty much wrap up the Fundamentals part of this wishlist series. From there we'll branch off into tactics, so set plays, evasive maneuvers, there's modes, there's customization, there's quality of life improvements. You know, there's plenty to talk about. If you have any ideas of your own uh, in regards to passing and kicking and whatnot, go ahead and let me know in the comment section down below. Let's have a little chat and bounce some ideas around. But for now, we'll wrap it up there, boys. If you enjoyed that, I would like to see more Life 4 content or more content in general. Be sure to run and show that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you, you. later.